Hey there, I always use magnetic squares for my welding projects. There are a few options you can buy, and to be fair, they're great, super handy and ridiculously cheap for what they are. But they've got a few problems. The first one is that most of them have these grooves along the sides, and as soon as you start grinding next to them, all the metal dust gets in there and it's basically impossible to clean out perfectly, so after a while the dust can actually collect and throw off your squareness, which is pretty annoying. The other issue is that they're kind of awkward to hold and not that strong, mainly because of the small surface area, and you can't really hang a part of them without the risk of it falling. So I thought, why not just make one myself, something solid, easy to clean and strong enough to actually hold parts in place. And since I wanted it to last, I decided to cast it from aluminum. Metal casting is one of those fundamental skills that pretty much built our civilization. It's kind of easy to forget how much of what we have today, tools, machines, and even the most ordinary objects all started off as molten metal. And it's kind of the same idea behind the book. The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding Civilization is all about the knowledge and invention that built the world we live in. The book, The Ultimate Guide for Rebuilding Civilization, is basically an illustrated encyclopedia of humankind's greatest inventions and discoveries. It's full of hand-drawn illustrations that blend engineering drawing with medieval art and is just beautiful to flip through. I honestly think the whole book is great, but but I especially love the section about forging, which of course is right up my alley, and the part about tools. There's even this old microscope in the optics section that made me smile because I actually have almost the exact same model from 1927, and now, thanks to the book, I can understand better how it actually works and all the different parts, which is amazing. The book is one of those things you can leave on a coffee table and anyone who's curious about how things work will end up flipping through it for hours. So yeah, it also makes for a perfect gift. I really like it myself. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the video description below. The book, The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding Civilization by Angry Minds, and you can get 10% off by using my promo code BLACKBEARD. All right, I already made the 3D model and printed the pattern for the magnetic square I want to make, so let's start by forming the mold.
All right, this square is finished. It's nice and heavy and super comfortable to hold and grab. So one of the two criteria I set out to accomplish is done. But before I test this against the cheap store-bought one for strength, I want to mention a couple of problems I ran into. The main one is that the magnets I got are weak. In the past, I built another similar magnetic fixture using the same type of magnets, and that one turned out very strong. Uh, you can actually see that this design is heavily inspired by that other older project of mine. But the magnets I got this time are just not as good. I tried to improve the overall strength by reducing the gap between the magnets and the surface of the square, but that led to a few defects because I accidentally cut into the magnets on one side, then there wasn't enough space for the epoxy to fill and cover everything, and that still wasn't quite enough for strength, so I ended up doubling the amount of magnets per side, which definitely helped, but still not amazing. Anywhere to compare the strength, I used a luggage scale. The big store-bought magnet square holds an average of about 22 kilograms, roughly 48 pounds, which is great. It's actually quite hard to pull the plate off at all. While my new square cast, on the other hand, averages at about 9.5 kilos, so about 21 pounds. So yeah, it feels roughly half as strong as the store-bought one, and that's a bit disappointing, but still decent for a first version. So that's it for this project, but while working on it, I had a few ideas on how to improve the design and the process, and if this is something you'd like to see more of, I might make a version 2. The main thing I want to try is using different magnets, uh, round ones, instead of strips, and that would make the whole thing a lot easier to build, and by adding a bunch of smaller magnets, it might even turn out stronger than this one. I think I once saw a video about arranging ground magnets to maximize the magnetic field. I can't remember where, so if you know what I'm talking about, or if you have any resources on the subject, let me know in the comments. Oh, and by the way, for the casting design, I added this big feeder, hoping it would help minimize shrinkage in the final cast, and it actually did. The square had pretty much no shrinkage on the top face, which is usually where I see it, and as expected, there was a good amount of shrinkage in the feeder itself, but on the bottom side of both the feeder and the square, I found a few big holes, which I've never seen happen before. Usually the bottom part of a sand cast piece comes out super clean because of the pressure from the molten metal. So yeah, I'm not sure what caused this. Possibly poor gating design. And anyway, it wasn't a big deal for this particular cast, so I just filled the holes with a bit of resin, mostly for looks and to keep the dust out. And that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you'd like to see version 2, drop a like or let me know in the comments. It really helps me to see if there's interest. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next project. Bye-bye.